add gas bills to the long list of things becoming more expensive by the day. The government inking a deal with gas supplies, meaning no more shortfalls, but it will cost you. Deputy Prime Minister Richard Miles and Opposition Leader Peter Dutton join me now. Good morning, guys. Nice to see you all this morning. Uh, Richard, morning, to Carl. you first up, these cost morning, of living pressures are getting excessive, aren't they? Through the roof. Um, this is the last thing households need. Well, there are a lot of pressures, and we really understand with things like rising interest rates, what that means for household budgets. It's, uh, easing that pressure has really been core business for the government since the moment that we were sworn in. Seeking a real increase to the lowest paid is, is what we achieved uh, at the start. We've obviously seen the, the biggest increase in the pension last week and during the course of this week we had legislation in the parliament which was ma about making childcare more affordable, cheap uh, medicines cheaper. So we are really focused on that and what what has been achieved uh, through Madeleine King's efforts with uh, the, the gas market is trying to do something about the East Coast gas market, which after a decade of the, the Liberals being in office, despite mm. the fact that we are a massive gas exporter, you know, we don't have a, a functional gas market in the East Coast, and that's what we're trying to achieve. But there are a, a lot of pressures on cost of living, and, and it is core business for us right now. OK, coal-fired power plants are closing up. And when conservatively do you think renewables will be at a level where they can safely sustain supply to Australians? What year do you think? Well, uh, the, what, what's a real difference for now compared to when I you know, entered Parliament, say, back in 2007, is that cheap energy is renewable energy. And we need to get it online as, as quickly as we can. And, and that's not going to happen overnight. Well, it, it's not going to happen overnight. But we uh, put in, have got in place a policy which is, uh, makes it clear that we will get to an, an emissions reduction target of 43% by 2030. Um, and that is all about getting renewables online. And it's about making sure that our electricity grid is able to take those renewables. And again, mm. it, you know, a decade, a lost decade in terms of action on renewable, on investment in renewable energy is the, the negative legacy that we're trying to deal with now. And, and we are, it, we can't do this overnight, but we can start the job and we're doing that. OK, Peter. Hey, morning, Carl. Uh, well, f a couple of points. I mean, firstly, you know, people are going to grow tired pretty quickly of uh, constantly Anthony Albanese and Richard Miles saying, well, you know, it was the other mob's fault. Uh, they were elected in May of this year. They haven't got a plan. They told the public before the election on 97 occasions that they were going to guarantee a price reduction of $275 in people's power bills. They refused to mention that figure any day since the election. And the problem with the rhetoric around, you know, cheap energy, uh, uh, you know, when the sun's shining, it's all free. The fact is that the sun sh doesn't shine 24-7, Carl. So it needs to be firmed up. And this is the problem that the government's got. You can only... Everybody wants renewables in the system. That's fine. But the question is how you firm them up and the cost associated with that. And that's either through coal or gas. If you don't like that, then it's through hydrogen, which is potentially years and years away. And what I'm worried about is that Labor's yeah. marching us down the track that Germany's in at the moment or that California's in, where they've got rolling blackouts and families just can't afford ever-increasing power prices. And at the moment, yeah. with the system that Labor's promising to roll out these you know, poles and wires, which is going to take decades uh, to distribute yeah. the, uh, the energy that they're talking about, it, it's just it's a pipe dream. It's not going to happen. And we're going to have the rolling blackouts that we've seen in California, uh, the desperate situation in the United Kingdom where pensioners can't afford to turn their heaters on over winter. Uh, that's exactly yes. where Labor is taking us and we need to be very careful. It's got to be delicate. Uh, moving on now, there's plenty of anger among Aussies who've had their, their personal data stolen in this Optus hack. Uh, uh, Richard, you've vowed to crack down on cyber security. Are fines really going to be enough though? Well, fines are part of it, but what we need to be doing is making sure that uh, the whole of corporate Australia and, and government is obviously uh, as robust as possible for these kind of hacks. And I think what's happened with Optus is it has been a wake-up call for corporate Australia. We've obviously been working very closely with Optus from the moment that we became aware of this, both to um, minimise the impact of the hack, but also to, to maximise the protection of those Optus customers who have been affected. But ultimately, people have a right to uh, feel that the information that they've given to companies um, is going to be 
robustly protected and stored and this has been a massive wake-up call for corporate Australia and we need to be doing everything we can to make uh, our, our private sector more resilient. Peter, Mark Dreyfus, so the Attorney General, was in our program yesterday saying there'd be some sort of legislation around this by the end of the year. Um, what do you think about that time frame? Well, Carl, it should have been in the Parliament uh, this week. I mean, Parliament's been sitting. The government was aware of this problem. And I think 10 million Australians should be white-hot with anger at the moment that their information was compromised and the Home Affairs Minister went missing for three days. Now, time is of the essence. It's, time is critical in these circumstances. And people need to secure their information because identity theft is a huge problem. You can lose your credit rating. You can be responsible for debt that you never ran up. And the government has completely missed the ball here. Uh, so I think customers really, uh, you know, are angry in these lines at the moment. Uh, we suggested that the passport office should be issuing uh, the passports for free and then the money recovered from Optus uh, subsequently so that you can get it done quickly before the information can be used uh, to start bank accounts or create credit cards uh, because it's too late then and I, I, I just can't believe that the minister sat on her hands for three days didn't come out she was tweeting about the AFL grand final but didn't you know give us stuff frankly about the customers of Optus and they're trying to sort of gather it all together now and send Mark Dreyfus out instead because he's a bit of a stronger voice than the Home Affairs Minister but she was missing completely missing in action. Um, all right, Richard, I, I wanted to get your thoughts on that, but, uh, but it was pretty strong and I kind of agreed with him. <laughs> well, he's hey, wrong. Uh, let's get I your opinion he's on... wrong. <laughs> let's get your opinion on the NRL Grand Final. Um, it's coming up uh, on Sunday, which is going to be absolutely fantastic. Uh, Richard, who do you think the main playmakers for, um, for Penrith are going to be? Oh, the, the, to ask a specific question like that of me is obviously above my pay grade. <laughs> and you're not a nice person for doing it. I have my I'm joking, prepared. I'm joking. I know, I know nothing about this, as you know. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to give you my lines. What, what um, I can't see him, but what tie is he wearing, Carl? <laughs> <laughs> He's got, still he got a Geelong tie on, blah, blah, blah. Still got the Cats tie on? <laughs> yeah. yeah, uh, yeah. And I, yeah. I, it, it'll come off, I don't know, New Year's, New Year's Day. Um, the head says uh, Penrith, heart says Parramatta. Yeah. Did you get a Geelong Premiership tattoo? You've got to go to the underdog. And if so, where? Uh, I'm not going to show you the, the tattoo, but um, it did get yeah, a bit messy on Sunday morning. <laughs> oh, how good. All right, Pete. It was very good here. is the answer. <laughs> I, want to, I, want to hear the, I want to hear the tat story, Carl. Keep going with that. <laughs> oh, hey, thanks, well, I mean, guys. We'll talk to you very soon. We appreciate it. Talk go to, to you Eels. Penrith with independent MP Dai Lee and the, well... The man of the moment. Triple the M's very own. Thank you. Gus Warland. <laughs> nice to see you. Round of applause for these two, everyone. Yeah. I love it. For you, in Parramatta mm, colours, no, deep no. in Panthers territory. Is it? Is it? No, You'll be lucky love, to get out alive. I just love blue. I just love blue and yellow. Do you? <laughs> <laughs> I love your dress sense. How are you feeling about everything? Um, in terms of? In terms of this. Of this? Yeah. Look, um, Are your boys going to take this home? The last time that I spoke with you, Carl, I mean, I have up my knowledge, um, but I know <laughs> <laughs> in terms of uh, footy, but I know that there are some diehard um, so para eels uh, here in Western Sydney, as yeah. well as Panthers, but mm -hmm. there are two, obviously, Western Sydney um, you know, team here. Uh, so win -win. Can I, yeah. I, I will give you $500 if you can lift that. It's really heavy. Ready? Let's, Not yes. together. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I've got my boss over Burlo. Can you give it a five hundred? <laughs> <laughs> Gus, uh, it's the, the great battle of the West, but I think the whole of Australia's into yeah. this. Oh, absolutely. The NRL's been brilliant this year, yeah. and uh, crowds back after a couple of years of COVID, and the mm. fact that the Panthers are now looking like a dynasty. You know, they, if they win this, they've won all the yeah. juniors as well, the yeah. reserve grade. They could have every trophy available to Australian Rugby League, and they could literally do it for the next few years as well. I, they should be excited. This crowd. I just yeah. reckon. It's great for them because they're <laughs> such a suck. <laughs> <laughs> they're my people, brother. <laughs> no, I love it out here too. Um, and it's such a great community. They didn't really get to enjoy it last no, year. It's so, so good that it's back now. Yeah. We can actually celebrate footy in, yeah. in person. So who do you reckon are going to be the playmakers to look out for? <laughs> Oh, Hey, can we talk about something you do know about? Yeah. Um, and we'll get back to the footy in a second. Um, yeah. but, but Optus, um, yeah. Mark Dreyfus was on our show yesterday. 
Uh, he said there'll be some sort of legislation in the next few months. Uh, I can't um, fathom why it can't be sooner than that. Yeah. Uh, because we're, uh, Parliament has risen and uh, next, uh, when we re return, will be Budget Week. So there'll be all the focus around budget. But uh, I think in terms of Optus, and I did raise this in Parliament last this week when I was there, is that uh, the CEO, and I've called on to the CEO, risen to her mm -hmm. to ask the CEO to actually look at those customers who've now lost trust with Optus yeah. mm -hmm. to get them to, to release them from, from contracts without being penalised. But in particular for small business, the shop fronts of Optus, those who are who are dealing with the brunt of public um, anger, to give them support so they can yeah, handle I think that's all of right. that. So it's very yeah. important. Yeah, I mean, that's huge pressure on them all. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. My mum's an Optus um, and she wants out now. She just doesn't yeah. well, trust. She's I, in her 80s yeah. and I'm like, we should be able to get out of whatever she's in, like you've said. But what about you can go back to Parliament and fix this stuff up? Like, because you get yeah. up and down or not, can't you just go back again and fix it up? I know well, you're all very like busy people. It's up to Optus. Yeah. It depends on the Optus. So, yeah. but, you know, the, but the, here's the thing. I don't know that there's a more pressing thing in relation to mm. Australia right right at this point with 10 million uh, Australians. So many yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, so. the, the, uh, obviously, data breach, and I think uh, globally, the companies are fined uh, heftily for this, and I think Australia should follow suit and, and put in some measures to make sure that, that you know, uh, c uh, customers are protected. Yeah, but it's not just Optus now. We're hearing yeah. about Virgin Mobile as well. Carriers, telecommunication yeah. carriers across, I think, yeah. But they're also affected. It's a, it's a worry. Yeah, mm. I mean, we're, this is what this is why we need to get some um, protection around the Gus. Absolutely, I mean, pe people feel so vulnerable at the moment. Yeah. No, people are vulnerable, full stop. And yeah. then you've got something that you think is pretty solid, yeah. and you feel that you're safe. Mm. You go, well, if it's Optus now, is it going to be Telstra the next day, which yeah. has obviously more people yeah. than Vodafone and everything else? So we just got to make sure we sort it out as mm. soon as possible. Okay. Now you're pumped. You are pumped. I've never seen you more pumped. Can you lift that thing? Yeah, I think oh, I can. Cool. You and Cal, your turn. Paul did it one hand. Yeah, I know. But it's, this is literally the world's heaviest yeah, we'll trophy. Yeah, we'll hold this. Now, oh, go on, you. <laughs> well done, everyone. <laughs> Imagine playing 80 minutes and going, yay! I can't imagine playing one minute. <laughs> it is so right, heavy. You're yeah, no, I'm good. I've done a slight injury. I'm fine, though. You, you are a little you? bit injury prone at the moment. I am. You spent a bit of time in the hospital. I have, you know, yeah. Are you okay, buddy? I am okay, thanks, darling. <laughs> yeah, I'll get there. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. Um, so, what are you going to do for the game? Well, we've got a whole lot of mates coming over. We've got barbecue. They've all got duties to bring sausages or beers or whiskey yeah, really? or onions or whatever it might be. So we're meeting at 1.30 for the first game, the New South Wales Cup game, and then all the way through uh, the night. Why onions? Well, you need onions, onions to go with your uh, sausage nice. sizzles. No, you and never you need them mix. chopped up beforehand as well. And the tomato sauce. No, you, never, you never put onions anywhere Well, you've got sausage. HP sauce, tomato sauce, barbecue yes, sauce. I'm with you, guys. And you've got all your mustards as well. Yes, condiments are, the, condiments yes. are king. That's king. Uh, condiments yeah. are king. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what are you going to be doing, though? Uh... Watching it with my husband. <laughs> Good answer. We love it. Uh, thanks for coming out here. Really appreciate it. No